Hello, this is Todd from TT Bike Fit. One thing we do during and after Kona is spend a lot of time looking at the top riders, both pros and age groupers, uh, looking at their positions and uh, dissecting everything we can about them uh, to increase our knowledge of how people are riding out there, how the best riders are riding, how they're set up, etc. so we can um, continue to uh, apply that and refine our own practice here. And one rider that stood out to us, and I actually noticed this last year with her, was Marinda Carfrey. Now, obviously Marinda was second by only a couple of minutes, uh, certainly one of the best runners the sport has ever seen. But her bike split this year was 5 to 20 minutes slower than the other top women pros. And it's quite apparent, watching her pedal style, that she's got a very different pedaling style than any of the other top riders in the Ironman, and in fact, any of the top riders we see on the Pro Tour or, or um, anywhere else. Uh, what we're going to typically see is a rider having a somewhat bent knee at the bottom of the pedal stroke and a downward angled foot. Now, it's clear when you look at Marinda here is that her leg is extremely extended at the bottom of the pedal stroke and her foot is very flat. To the extent that Greg Welsh during the Universal Sports um, online uh, live coverage, you know, made the comment that her seat looks high. Uh, it's, it's something that, that if you spent a lot of time observing riders would be, would be immediately obvious. So we can quickly plot some approximate angles on her and see about a 158 uh, knee angle and about a 9 degree toe down position at the bottom of the pedal stroke. So this is an extremely extended leg uh, versus what we typically see and how we would normally set up a rider. And at the same time, it's a very flat foot. So you could say that her saddle is too high. Uh, that may or may not be the case. Uh, that would depend on her pedaling technique. Now, because she is pedaling with such a flat foot through the bottom of the pedal stroke, it does make her knee very straight at the bottom of the pedal stroke, making the saddle tier too high. So there's two ways to possibly approach this problem. One would be if she absolutely insists on pedaling with this type of a pedal style to lower the saddle so that she does have a little bit more bend in the knee. The other approach would be to work on her pedaling technique so that she does pedal with a more uh, supple uh, foot positioning and a more toe-down style through the bottom of the pedal stroke, in which case her saddle height may or may not need to be changed. In that case, you'd be analyzing the, the foot and uh, knee angle as you change the saddle and determine what would be the optimal positioning there. We can do a comparison with uh, Julie Dibbins, who of course is one of the fastest cyclists out there, and take a look at her pedal style. And she's got really a classic, classic pedal style. You can see as she comes through here, and note that she is driving into the wind here. So. This is on the way back towards the end of the Queen K. She's driving into the wind, so she's probably pushing fairly high watts. And we can see a classic pedal stroke from the standpoint that through the power phase, her foot is flat. And as she reaches the bottom of the pedal stroke, she drops her toe downward and then heel up through the back of the pedal stroke. We don't see this hyperextension of the knee that we see with Marinda and very flat foot at the bottom of the pedal stroke. If we were to look at the angles on Julie, we would see that as opposed to being in the high 150s, she's in the high 140s with approximately a, a mid 20 degree foot angle. This is a classic uh, set of angles here that we're going to see on an elite rider.
We can also look at another fantastic cyclist, Chris Lieto. This is from last year. And we can clearly see very similar pedal style to that that we see in Julie Dibbins. And I could put up any number of cyclists, both triathletes and pro tour cyclists, and you would see this nearly identical pedal stroke style. A lot of people are surprised that the toe actually does drop down at the bottom of the pedal stroke, and I hear this a lot during bike fitting sessions. Uh, they, When I tell them that, they've never seen themselves pedal, and they're surprised that they actually do this. Now, there are many who don't because somebody at one point told them, oh, you know, don't pedal toes down, that that's a bad pedaling technique. Well, clearly it depends upon which part of the pedal stroke you're talking about. Through the power face, foot nearly horizontal, as it reaches the bottom of the pedal stroke, we want toe down somewhere in the 20 to 30 degree range typically. If we look at the angles, we're seeing similar angles to Dibbons, mid-20s, mid-140s, uh, knee, mid-140s, mid-20s on the foot angle. And here we can see another shot of Marinda with that same very extended leg and flat foot. So there's a good chance that riding in this position, she's either losing power through the bottom of the pedal stroke. If we looked at her on a spin scan, uh, we might see a dead spot in the pedal stroke through here. Uh, that may or may not be the case. Uh, the other thing, though, that could be could happen as a result of this hyperextended knee is that certainly she's stretching out her hamstrings uh, quite a bit. Uh, she may also be um, stretching her uh, calf quite a bit, calf and Achilles, uh, throughout the pedal stroke at the bottom of the phase here. Now that normally wouldn't be a good thing for a uh, good runner. The other thing is that it tends to uh, potentially lead to ITB band problems when a cyclist is riding with this straight of a knee. I feel fairly certain that if this problem was remedied in that we got her into a more uh, standard um, classic pedaling style through the right combination of, of um, saddle positioning and technique work, that she could probably generate a good bit more power on the bike. Uh, and, you know, that could certainly be a dangerous thing for the other competitors out in Kona if she was able to take... Uh, several minutes off of her bike split. Now, the other thing we can talk about in regards to her position, and this is something else that Greg Welch commented on during the uh, Universal Sports race coverage, is that she looks relatively upright compared to some of the other riders. And we would agree with that in that her torso angle here is, is fairly upright in, in the mid-teens range as we measure it angle-wise, whereas we're typically looking for an elite position uh, sub-10. So what that does is it allows the wind to see a fair bit of the front of her torso. Let's get rid of those angles. And look at the angle here. And it allows the wind to see increased frontal area versus what it would see if she was flatter. So if we're trying to, granted she's going uphill relative to the camera here, so but we're looking at this area here between these two lines that the wind is seeing, whereas if she was flatter, the wind wouldn't see that at all. So she could reduce her frontal area. The other thing that would potentially be reduced is the degree to which her head projects up above her shoulders. She's got a fair bit of head up above her shoulders, and this is one of the easiest ways to reduce your frontal area, uh, reduce your drag, increase your speed, is to reduce or eliminate the amount of head that shows up above the high point in your back. So certainly, you know, we could see that, that there's the potential there at least, um, assuming that, that she can get comfortable in the biomechanics work and everything else, uh, with her, with the potential there at least for her to uh, reduce her drag and get some free speed out of her position by potentially lowering the front end. It also looks to me like her front end is fairly short for her. Uh, now she is pulled forward on the saddle here, 
So she's pulled forward into what we would consider a normal position. So it's, it's not so much that she's pulled forward in the saddle, but it's, it's that her saddle is set at a fairly slack seat angle, and she's got herself forward on it to get herself into a approximate 78, 79 degree position. So when she's there, uh, she does have a very vertical upper arm, which is good, but relative to her torso angle, it makes this angle here between her torso and her upper arm fairly acute, which can lead to uh, shoulder discomfort or fatigue uh, after a while. So, you know, there, if we would have the chance to work with her, we would certainly be looking at all these different factors, probably on our on our fit bike first, and, uh, you know, running her through some race pace intervals and changing these various factors to try to improve all these while at the same time getting feedback from her and, uh, and from the equipment to see that, that the power output is good and that, you know, she's comfortable in the position. Arrow-wise, we can compare her to uh, Caroline Steffen here, who I think does an excellent job of keeping herself very arrow, even though she's not wearing an arrow helmet. You'll notice that she is basically dead flat torso-wise, so the wind is seeing nothing of the front of her torso. You'll also notice that if we look at the top, you know, the high point on her back, try to get this line parallel to the, to the ground, there's very little of her head that projects up above that, so that she's really minimizing her frontal area very well compared to Marinda's position here where she is uh, hurting herself through exposing more of her head and torso to the wind than she needs to. So the conclusion here is that we think that Marinda could get a good bit faster on the bike uh, with some essentially free speed without any increase in fitness through a combination of uh, some work on her fit, some work on her pedal stroke, and um, you know, maximizing both her aerodynamics and uh, power and fluidity of her pedal stroke.